The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective, brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil, again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Detective Agency. Say moi, sweetheart. Oh, Sam, how did it go? Well, it uh, wasn't exactly a ten and one outfit. Uh, more of a mud show, dog and pony type, you know, rag front. Sam, what are you talking about? Hmm? And by the way, where were you last night? I uh, missed the last bus in from the cow palace, so I had to do a star pitch. Connie talk at. Oh, if you think I'm going to ask what a star pitch is, you're mistaken. What were you doing at the cow palace? Oh, just bulling around. Oh, Sam? Yes? Um, Sam? Yes? Sam... Uh, you ask too many questions. Sweetheart, in the patois of the carnival, I'll be right down to pitch my spiel, spiel my pitch, and make with a canvas on the bluebeard caper. Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama... Join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Say, Mom, if the summer winds are making Junior's hair drier and mussier than it should be, why not borrow a little of Dad's Wild Root Cream Oil and restore that sweet, angelic look? You'll find Wild Root Cream Oil hair tonic comes in handy for every member of the family. It grooms the hair so neatly and naturally relieves that summer dryness, and removes loose dandruff, too. Better check on your supply right now. If it's running low, then tonight or tomorrow, first thing, get Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. <laughs> Ready, Effie? Yes, Sam. By the way, what is a star pitch? Hmm? Oh, your clothes. You look as if you'd slept on the ground. <clears throat> That's what it is. Uh, date, August 8, 1948, to Detective Lieutenant Dundee, homicide detail, San Francisco Police. From Samuel Spade, license number 127596. Subject, the uh, Bluebeard Caper. I uh, will not offer as an extenuating circumstance the fact that business is bad all over. But it is true that I had been sitting in my office for four hours and the phone had not rung once. This one didn't phone. From the looks of him, he didn't have the required nickel. But the hangover he was wearing under his eyes had cost someone a pretty penny, so I figured his credit might be good somewhere. Uh, Mr. Spade? Yeah? Oh, my head. Here, try this. Oh. Want it mixed? Oh, uh, no, no, no soda. I couldn't stand the noise. Where'd you wake up? In these same clothes. Figures. Uh, it, it all started at my sister's engagement party. Uh, mint juleps. Mm. They must have been full of flukum. Flukum. Uh, you don't happen to have an ice bag. It's customary for my clients to bring their own. Oh. Well, now here's a spiel. Uh, did I tell you my name? The name you gave my secretary was Ned Towers. You want to stick with that? Uh, yeah, Ned. Uh, Ned Towers, yeah. Uh, it, it's about my sister. She's... Um, her name? Uh, Sylvia. Sylvia Towers. Uh, Sylvia Towers, yeah. Uh, but it's not about her, really. It, it's about that bluebird. I, I mean, bluebird she's marrying. Uh, Jefferson Davis Calhoun. What about him? Oh, that, that marriage has got to be stopped. I found out that his name's not Calhoun at all, th that he's been married three times under three different names, and that all his wives died mysteriously, and, and that he collected their insurance, and now he's talked my sister into insuring herself for 100,000 bucks in his favor. When did you learn all this? In a barbershop yesterday. Oh. I, I went in to get a manicure, and I picked up this old detective magazine. Here's his picture. Uh, look at it. <laughs> I had heard of the case. In his heyday, the papers had called him the Mint Julep Romeo. And any name he happened to be using at the time had Colonel in front of it. None of his three wives had survived the honeymoon. Wife number one, an aviatrix, bailed out at 10,000 feet over Mount Hood along with her husband. His parachute opened, hers didn't. They found the body the following spring. Wife number two, a snake dancer, died of snake bite when she squared off with a full-fanged diamondback instead of her usual non-poisonous partner. 
cause of death was never officially proven because the body was embalmed by mistake, it said there, before the coroner arrived. And finally, number three, a professional stunt woman disappeared over Niagara Falls in a beer keg instead of her specially designed barrel and was never seen again. Well, Mr. Spain? Yeah, but are you uh, sure your sister's fiancé, this uh, Calhoun, is the same guy? Well, here's a picture of them together. It's their engagement photograph. What do you think? Hmm. Brunette? My sister? Redhead. Uh, that's him on the left. Redhead? Well, uh, Mr. Towers, are we going to sit idly by and see another poor girl go to her death? How much money you got? About $100. I'll take 50 now. You are going to help. How much does she already know? I tried to tell her. She's beautiful. She wouldn't even listen. I thought she might listen to you. I pray she will, Ned. I pray she will. There were two aspects of the case that I wanted to look over more closely. A, Sylvia's red hair, and B, the red splotches on my client's face. I had a hunch she might be suffering from more than a hangover. So I dropped him at the address of a medical friend of mine who specializes in poisons. He said the tests would take most of the afternoon, so I decided to find out who was Sylvia, what was she, was she as kind as she was fair. Such a face as Yes? Yes. I beg your pardon? Miss Towers? Yes, I'm Sylvia Towers. Are you the florist? You're expecting maybe a detective? Come in. Thanks, I will. Well, as a matter of fact, I wasn't expecting a florist or anyone else. But I'm glad to see you. I really am. Huh? Sit down here. I was just relaxing. Oh, no, over here. Oh. Well, why not? There. Isn't this more cozy? Yeah. Take your hat off. Oh. You'll have me believing you really are a detective. What do I look like? Well, I'll have to muddle it over. Now, don't tell me. Let me dream. Look, Sylvia, uh, Miss uh, Powers, I mean. Oh, uh, Sylvia, I like the way you dress. Nice and casual. Oh, you do? But, you know, you really should wear a handkerchief. Hey, hey. <laughs> you tickly. Well, look, if you want to frisk me, get it over with. It's your apartment. you got a right to. Well, isn't this way nice? Sure, you? it's fine. It's just that, uh, well, you know, I just didn't expect. I uh, just didn't expect. Well, what do you want, a butterfly act? No, it's just that my feelings have hurt you. Haven't asked me who I am or what I'm doing here or anything. Oh, I don't care. I like you. Is this how you got engaged to Calhoun? No, he was selling some phony stock certificates, so I bought a few. They were phony, so you bought a few. Figured. He'd had bad luck with marriage. It was the only way I could force the issue. You're forcing him into marrying you? Darling, don't be so critical. I did it very nicely. I'm sure you did, but Why? Oh, I don't know. He's so, so courtly. A real southern gentleman. How real? Uh, hand me that cushion, darling. Oh. Oh, no, here, behind my head. Oh. Oh, that's better. Oh, don't go away. Why do you want to be number four on the Bluebeard Parade? Oh, do you really think he did kill them? Oh, that's one of two theories. He either did or he didn't. Oh, I love your hair. <clears throat> so nice, bristly. <clears throat> Does this bother you? Yeah, but don't stop. Uh, now, uh, wait a minute. Look, I've uh, I got my client to think about, and I'm, I'm trying to think about it. Darling. I didn't want to take this assignment, but he really seemed to be worried about you. Oh, now, who on earth would be worried about me? I'm a little worried about you myself, and I'm not even distantly related to you. Well, don't say that yet. This marriage may not last long. Don't you say that. Oh, I know his marital life has been full of tragedy. But I'm not superstitious. I think I may change his luck. Okay, Sylvia, okay, it's your life. I told your brother I'd talk to you, and I have. My brother? Yeah, Ned. I think maybe your boyfriend tried to poison him last night. Oh, no. I... Uh-huh. Oh, Jeff, you're just in time. Well, my dear, we will discuss this further in private. I have only this to say at the present time. In the South, it is not customary for a lady to receive a gentleman alone just prior to her marriage to another gentleman. But, Jeff... I know your motives were pure and innocent. Customs differ, that's all. I am Colonel Calhoun at your service, sir. 
I'll uh, call you when I need you. I'm afraid I must ask you to remain. Sylvia? Oh, Jeff, I meant to tell you. It was just a flirtation. Yeah, that's I didn't all. think it was. You mean well, she didn't think. he made certain proposals? Well, what well, did I do? What could she do? He said there were things in your past, Jeff. Yeah, that's what I said. Things that... Oh, well, there, there, my dear. It was blackmail. That's all it was. I did it for you, Jeff. Go to your she chambers, you. Sylvia. I will deal with this adventurer. If this were the South, there would be better ways. But never fear. Where there's a Calhoun there, too, you will find Southern chivalry. Please. No, Jeff. Phone the police. Sylvia, I must insist that you do as I say. Very well, Jeff. You know best. Yeah. Well, sir, how about you and me putting our heads together over little old mint julep, huh? Thanks, <laughs> I'm not thirsty. Uh, what's the pitch, Colonel? How come your girlfriend yelled, hey, Rube, just now? What is your asking price, sir? What's your bid? Uh, 5000 now, 5000 after she's buried, 20000 after the insurance people pays off. No dice. Caper's worth a hundred grand. Fifty for me, fifty for you. That is out of the question, sir. Okay, from here I go to the car. Uh, now, son, let's not be hasty about this. It will require a slight change of plan, but uh, I reckon I can swing it. All right, fifty-fifty. When are you going to knock her off? Shh, shh. You want her to fly the coop? Is there another way out of here? Well, not that I know of, but uh, she's crafty. She's crafty. Well, come on, let's get it over. Yes, you're right. Maybe now or never. That's right. Sylvia? Hey, wait a minute. Huh? Come here. What is it? How are you going to do it? Well, hit her with this and then out the window. Let me see, then. See? That's got quite a heft to it. Where'd you get this sap? Souvenir of Niagara Falls. Know where you're going to get it? Why, you Yankee! The souvenir of Niagara Falls was deadlier than I thought. The blow spun him around like a top, and he went down on the other side of the room, taking the bar and the mint julep ingredients along with him. I headed for the room Sylvia disappeared into. But she had already disappeared out of it. I looked in the closets, the bathroom, under the bed, tapped the walls for secret panels, and then forced myself to look out the only possible exit, the open window. Ten stories sheer drop to the street. Two stories sheer unclimbable masonry to the roof. Now, get this, Dundee. No other exit, no horizontal ledges, drain pipes, niches, cornices, not even a helicopter landing. I asked myself, who is Sylvia? What is she? The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead, socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. And no wonder. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms the hair neatly and naturally, relieves annoying dryness, and removes loose dandruff. What's more, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil is the only leading hair tonic that contains soothing lanolin. So ask for Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. By the way, smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too. And mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. <laughs> Now, back to the Bluebeard Caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. There was no use wasting any time trying to figure out how Sylvia had done whatever she had done to escape from that escape-proof room. There was nothing of interest in it but a diving helmet, deep-sea type, and the current issue of Billboard, a magazine which records the movements of show people. Under uh, carnivals and tent shows, an item was circled. Colonel Carlyle's Carl <laughs> Colossal Carnival and Tent Show, which was currently playing San Francisco out by the Cow Palace. That reminded me of the colonel in the next room. I went in to hit him again, but somehow his not being there didn't surprise me a bit. What I found on the roof did surprise me a little. It was a rope and grappling hook, human fly type, which fitted with the circusy aspect the caper was beginning to take on. 
I'd never have taken Sylvia for a stunt woman. I uh, did a neat, uh, cheap knee bend to get into condition for what lay ahead. Slid down the banister to the top floor, somersaulted into an elevator, and rode it down to the lobby, no hands. Pausing only to acknowledge the applause of the scrub woman, I skated on over to the phone booth. Sylvia's hands like the night. Uh, uh, Dr. Mandel's office. Bernie, Sam Spade. Oh, say, I'm glad you called, Sam. That uh, patient you brought in here, uh, Ned Towers? Yeah, what about him? Well, your hunch was right. There was enough poison in him to kill him twice. Uh And that ain't all. He dead? No. Then what's all? Well, his stomach had enough foreign objects in it to keep all the newspapers in town in Monday morning feature stories for the rest of the year. What type foreign objects? Oh, uh, glassware, spoons, hunting knives. Well, nothing valuable. Where'd you send them? Oh, he, he wasn't a hospital case, Sam. Enough poison to kill him twice, glassware, spoons, hunting knives, and not a hospital case, huh? The poison, he's uh, developed an immunity. The other stuff, uh, it's harmless. Harmless, huh? Do you want me to send you the complete report? Uh, no, no, forget it, Bernie. You've given me enough. Thanks. From then on, Dundee, it was uh, mostly entertainment. I uh, headed to the carnival grounds outside the town, and uh, Colonel Carlyle's Carlossal Carnival in Tensho unfolded before my very eyes just west of the Cow Palace. I only brought to you in the interest of artistic endeavor, Mademoiselle Mahala, the favorite dancing girl of the Sultan of Zanzibar, brought direct from the perfume gardens of the Mystic Orient. Every muscle of a gorgeous body shakes. And now, now, ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of science and the furtherance of national defense, one of the medical miracles of the 20th century. A ladies and gentlemen, a man with the iron stomach and the asbestos esophagus, Professor Delator. Professor, if you please, sir, give the folks a sample of your control over the fiery element. I will light the torch. And hand it to the professor. And now, professor, if you will kindly... The coach dancer left me cold, but the uh, fire-eating professor looked hot. It was none other than my client, the man who called himself Ned Towers. I moved as close to the platform as I could without setting fire to myself and caught his eye. When he caught mine, it singed my eyelashes. Hey, scream all I got my act to do. I can't talk to nobody. Where's the colonel? Uh, there ain't any colonel, just for the banner tack. Where's your sister? I ain't got no sister. Then who is Sylvia? Hey, do me a favor, Shamus. Keep the 50 and forget the whole pitch. Now be it, huh? Oh, I want to see the show. Okay, you paid for your duck. Stare your eyes out if you want to. Okay, but just start squawking. They're drifting away. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that was only a sample. Only a sample. Why, he eats the stone and throws the beach away. And he uses powdered poison on his soft boy legs. Now tell me, if you will, is there a doctor in the crowd? I uh, drifted on down the midway. There was uh, Boona Boona, Nature Boy, Gilda and Hilda, the Siamese twins. There was Shorty, the fat man, and Fatty, the short man, a bearded lady and several natural freaks of nature. At the very end, there was a big canvas enclosure. The act was called the Three Death-Defying Darlings. From the noise inside, I judged that to be an understatement. I bought a ticket and got inside just in time to see a trim, energetic blonde in tailored coveralls crawl out of the twisted wreckage of the car. She'd just driven point blank into a concrete wall at an advertised speed of 80 miles an hour. She took a bow, tripped lightly out of the ring, and a brunette about the same size and shape, but wearing a costume consisting mainly of three live rattlesnakes passed her coming in. I swear she did. I also swear that she danced so well I didn't even notice the snakes after I got used to them. Before the lead snake had taken its final bow and wriggled out of sight, a redhead in green coveralls appeared at the top of a 60-foot tower. She climbed into a barrel and some stupid fool pushed her off. The tank she landed in was no more than three feet across and couldn't have had more than a foot of water in it. But she emerged from the splinters with her face wet and some of the greasy carnival-type makeup washed off. The red-headed branch of the death-defying darlings was, you guessed it, that miraculous escape artist, the one and only Sylvia. 
I was anxious to meet the rest of the act, so I vaulted over the canvas to their trailer dressing room. There was a sinister buzzing sound at my ankles as I entered. I jumped out of the way just in time to miss getting bitten by one of the brunette's dancing partners, the Diamondback. Sylvia looked at me pityingly, grabbed it expertly just behind the head, and shoved it down into its basket. Sam, you should have known better than to come in here unannounced. Strangers make Salome terribly nervous. Then we're even. How did you know I was here? I didn't. I was looking for my client. Then you are working for Ned. Who else? Well, when I heard you bargaining with Jeff, I didn't know what to think. Before that, I'd been so sure. Look, sweetheart, I haven't been sure of anything in this caper from the start, least of all you. No matter how sure I get, I still won't believe it. Look at me, Sam. Touch me. I'm only flesh and blood. Yeah, well, anyhow, uh, how did you uh, meet yourself coming on with the snakes when you went out in the coveralls? Oh, zippers. I was wearing the snakes underneath all the time. Snakes? Uh, doesn't the auto crash make them nervous? Oh, no. They're used to it. Mother trains them. That was after father... Never mind your family. Let's talk about you. All three of you. Well, after mother and father... Well, the act was a threesome, you see, and they wouldn't keep me on as a single. Yeah. So Jeff Calhoun worked out a routine so only one of me would be on at one time. That figures. How often do you uh, come out of it alive? You mustn't say things like that, even in joking. I'm terribly out of condition. I haven't had a real workout since... Since you went over Niagara Falls on that beer keg? And by the way, how did you manage that? It's simple. Relaxation. Secret of everything. I could teach you that, Sam, darling. Mm. Jeff could never learn it. How long do you think we'd get away with it, sweetheart? Aren't you taking rather a lot for granted? Maybe not enough. So far as I know, you've only been killed and resurrected three times. Darling, if it frightens you, I promise I'll never do it again. How did you drop 10,000 feet without a parachute? Oh, that Mount Hood stunt? Mm -hmm. I crash-landed the plane, set fire to it. There were witnesses. Something dropped. Oh, nothing but a weighted flight suit. Whose body was that they found? There are always bodies when the snow melts. By the time they get to them, they could be anybody. Oh, that's a relief. Uh, what about that other body? Which other one, darling? When you were embalmed after the snake bite. Oh, oh. Well, Jeff just claimed somebody from the morgue that nobody else wanted. Don't be so critical, darling. We didn't hurt anybody. Better not try to tell that to those insurance companies. Well, they should be happy. Jeff says it helps them with their taxes. Does it make you happy? Dying and being dug up every year or so? Well, it's better than doing it every night. But I couldn't go back to Jeff. He lost his nerve after Ned found out. You see, Ned's the only one left who knew me in the old days. If I were dead, he couldn't prove anything. Jeff really meant to kill me this time. What was Ned after? Blackmail? Oh, no. He wanted me back with the show. He hired you to frighten Jeff into letting me go. After all, I am the best threesome in the business. Well, uh, uh, anyway, in the stunt field. Did you see my review on Billboard? I saw for myself. You know something? I was thinking... With all you know about crime... Don't say it. But, darling, it's so easy. And we could have a honeymoon every time I, I came back and we got married again. Thanks for the offer, but if I get married, I want my wife to stay alive every night. But I wouldn't really be dead. Only legally for the insurance. Only legally, Sam. Come here. Sam, darling. Look, uh, <laughs> sweetheart, let's not relax. You're not safe. Not as long as that insurance policy's floating around with Jeff's name on it as beneficiary. He'd never think of looking for me here. Well, the same. You better take that policy into town in the morning and make some changes. Where is it? Oh, it's in my safe. You got a safe here in this trailer? Well, it's just a secret safe. I only call it a safe. But it is well, safe. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd find you here. But I hardly expected to see Mr. Spade. You don't surprise me a bit, Bluebeard. Hello, Jeff. Sit down and stop waving that revolver. What do you want? That policy. I heard every word you two have been saying. Not that that piece of paper means anything. You won't even be around when the bank's open. But having the original policy in my hand will save a lot of delay, red tape. Of course, Jeff. Where is it? Uh, oh, what's the use? It's in the basket, right by the side of your chair. Wait a minute. Don't move, Spade. If you do, I'll bless you. Listen to me. Don't raise so that lid. you're safe. Still a child, aren't you, Sylvia? Don't do it, Calhoun. Don't do it. <laughs> And that lieutenant dear took the lid right off of the caper. Due to my Boy Scout training, my split-second timing, and the fact that Salome's fang missed an artery by a thirtieth of an inch, I understand uh, Calhoun will live long enough, which, as far as I'm concerned, is any length of time you care to name. About Sylvia, I uh, really don't know how to advise you there, but if you're uh, planning on charging her with attempted homicide, 
you'll find that there are three Darling sisters listed as U.S. citizens and residents of California. It might be hard to figure out which one of her to indict. Period. Uh, end of Nightmare Alley, Bluebeard Division. Any uh, questions, F? Oh, just one, Sam. A grammatical error, but I'll correct it. And just whom do you think you are to be correcting my grammar? Who, Sam? Nominated case. Nominal. Nominated, Sam. The most frequently used cases in English are nominative, accusative, and possessive. Mm. Now, I'm referring to your sentence, which reads, it might be hard to figure out which one of her to indict. Yeah. Of course, you meant them, since they're three darling sisters. Her uh, being singular. Indeed, her was singular, Effie. Oh, Sam, you made a joke. That's yeah, a very small one. Now, uh, type that up and leave my grammar as is. It's colorful. Oh, very well, Sam. I'll just fix the syntax as I go along. Syntax? In California? <laughs> Say, are you looking for a hair tonic that will groom your hair neatly and naturally? Then you're looking for Wild Root Cream Oil. Want a hair tonic that relieves annoying dryness? Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Like a hair tonic that removes loose, ugly dandruff? The answer again is Wild Root Cream Oil, the famous hair tonic that gives you the big advantages men consider most important. Step up to your drug or toilet goods counter first chance you get and ask for Wild Root Cream Oil in the big economy bottle, and the handy new tube that's easy to pack when you travel. Also, ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Well, here it is, Sam. You were quite right. She was only one girl, so I left it to her and made the correction back farther. Back where, Twinkle Toes? The sentence just prior... Hmm? Twinkle toes. Hmm. You know, where you said three darling sisters, I changed it to one. That's impossible. It takes two to make a sister. That is not funny, Sam. Who's laughing? It's no laughing matter, Sam. After all, that Sylvia, the darling sister, whatever she... And I don't care if she can go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. Let's get it right, a beer keg. In fact, the only funny thing is you being taken in. After all, snake charmers of that type are a dime a dozen. Well, here's 20 cents. Phone up that place. What place? Where you get the red-headed snake charm is 12 for 10 cents. Dime a dozen, Sam. It's a figment of speech. Mm, you can say that again, sweetheart. Pretending to be three people, all with different hair, and wearing snakes under a coverall. Oh, Effie. No normal girl would do that, Sam. Hmm, I don't know. Women do all kinds of work. Uh, oh, Sam. Why can't I be an adventurous like some girls are? I wouldn't trade you for 30 cents worth of snake charmers. Oh, Sam. That's the nicest thing you ever said. To well, next to the nicest. Good night, Sam. Good night, Salome. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Dove. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tolman and Gil Dowd, with musical direction by Lud Gluskin. Join us again next Sunday when author Dashiell Hammett and producer William Spear join forces for another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. This is Dick Joy reminding you to... Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. It keeps your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie. It's made with soothing lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. Start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie. Keep on all the gals away. Hiya, Baldy. Get wild root right away. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>